With use cases from predicting the stock market to curing cancer, machine learning and AI are already revolutionizing our world as we know it. A term I've heard that really encapsulates a machine learning process is that machine learning is a science of getting computers to act without being explicitly programmed. In this video, we're going to cover the components that make up machine learning, break down the different models and algorithms, and review common use cases in cybersecurity and IT. Before we go any further, this is a perfect moment to hit like on the video to give me a boost in the YouTube algorithm. It will also help YouTube identify videos that interest you by reinforcing the machine learning algorithm. Please also subscribe if you're interested in seeing more tech and cybersecurity videos. Now let's dive into machine learning. Let's start by clarifying the AI versus machine learning terminology. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is a general term we use when we talk about machines making decisions. This could be as simple as making recommendations on your next song on Spotify to predicting stock market prices based on massive amounts of data. Machine learning is one approach or subset of AI that is rooted in statistical algorithms to make data-driven decisions. Deep learning is a further subset of machine learning, and it uses neural networks to use reason in determining whether or not machine learning output was correct and adjust it if necessary. At its core, machine learning are algorithms that parse data. They learn from data and then apply what they've learned to make informed decisions. More specifically, algorithms take data along with training that it has received to provide an output or a decision. Over time, the training process improves the overall quality of each output. Each piece of information that is learned feeds into the machine learning model in a continuous cycle of output and retraining. There are three important components to a machine learning model, and they include data, algorithm, and training. By definition, training consists of learning some new piece of information, whether that be by someone teaching you or by experience. That is why an important part of the training process involves how information is going to be learned by the different models, and there are different models based on the use case. Four of the most common learning methods include supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised, and reinforcement training. In supervised learning, the machine is given some prior knowledge, what is good or bad, what works, what doesn't. A good example of this would be image classification, where we train the machine to detect a dog from a series of pictures so that it can learn what a dog is. Likewise, if we wanted the machine to classify a cat, we need to train the machine with a series of pictures of cats so that it knows to recognize a dog versus a cat from an image. With unsupervised training, the machine has no prior knowledge, and it's essentially starting from a blank state. It still has data to work from, but it has no trained concept of what good or bad is, what a dog or cat is. This kind of learning is used frequently in algorithms like regression analysis, where you're taking massive amounts of past data to predict a future value. Unsupervised learning is good for finding hidden gems in data where we don't know exactly what we're looking for, but we want to find anomalies or relationships that we didn't know existed. Semi-supervised is a combination of these two learning approaches because you're giving the machine some data to work from, but ultimately it has to make its own decisions. A good example of this is facial recognition on video, where the machine needs a known picture, which is supervised, to match a face to a video, unsupervised. Lastly, reinforcement training is about having a machine learn to make a sequence of decisions based on trial and error. Reward or penalties reinforce good or bad behavior on its ultimate goal of solving some complex problems. Autonomous cars are a good example of reinforcement training because a programmer cannot account for every possible scenario on the road, and it must leave it to the machine to make decisions as it learns them. This gives algorithms the flexibility to make decisions on the fly based on feedback like proximity sensors or objects on the road. At this point, it's important to note that how the machine learns the data is a, an important part of the training process that makes up the overall machine learning model. But models themselves are not to be confused with algorithms. As we mentioned previously, as you train an algorithm with data, it becomes a model. So to put it another way, models equal training times algorithm plus data. The more data and time that runs the algorithm, the more fine-tuned it becomes, which lead to better decisions. And just like there are different learning methods for different use cases, so too are there different algorithms based on the need. We're going to review five of the most common algorithms here, which include classification, regression, recommendation, dimensionality reduction, and clustering. Let's start off with a classification algorithm, which, as its name indicates, is focused on classifying or categorizing data. 
In a cybersecurity context, this type of algorithm is one of the most common because the machine is classifying what is good or bad, clean or malicious. This kind of algorithm is common in email servers to classify spam messages. Part of the learning process would be to train the algorithm based on examples of actual spam messages. For example, having unknown email addresses, having too many exclamation marks, or sentences that just don't sound natural. The training process would also include giving the algorithm examples of real emails. For example, emails that are personally address, clear language, etc. Classification algorithms are also being used a lot in the SIM space where the SIM device is taking in data from devices on your network, learning what is normal behavior to help identify outliers. Unlike traditional SIMs without machine learning where rules are static, here it would be learning and getting better over time as it learns more data from your network. Clustering algorithm works in a similar way, but for a different purpose. With clustering, we're focused on finding similarities between data points and grouping or clustering them together. The main difference between classification and cluster is that cluster identifies similarities between objects, whereas classification uses predefined classes. In other words, clustering automatically finds and groups similarities, whereas classification puts data into these pre-configured classes. Say, for example, you have an e-commerce site and you want to classify user traffic for marketing purposes. Based on their cookie or traffic information, you can classify them into groups or clusters like new customers, high income earners, low income earners, and so on. Once a user has been classified, it's up to you to decide what you want to do with the data, like pass it on to a recommendation algorithm to make recommendations based on that income or demographics. Clustering has many different use cases, and it's common to use in combination with other algorithms. Using our previous e-commerce example, once we have our users grouped together, we can use a next algorithm to make calculated recommendation. As its name indicates, recommendation algorithms are focused on making recommendations based on past data. The logic is simple. Based on past data about users, the recommendation algorithm finds trends that people who bought or viewed X will also buy or view Y. Algorithms like this are a multi-billion dollar industry and used by YouTube, Amazon, and Facebook to make calculated recommendations based on who you are and what the recommendation algorithm thinks will get you engaged. The recent documentary on Netflix called Social Dilemma talks in depth about this kind of recommendation algorithm and the dangers that come with it for a society at large. Next, we have regression algorithm, which is focused on predicting values based on past data. Or put another way, the knowledge about existing data is utilized to predict new data. For example, say you had details of every house sale over the last 10 years. This includes square footage, zip code, number of beds, sale price, and so on. The past data can be used as the input into the regression algorithm, which is then used to predict future price values and trends. And this kind of algorithm is very popular in medicine, stock market, and real estate, but the reality is that every industry can benefit from this kind of data mining. Credit card companies and banks have been using this for fraud detection for a long time, where your historical purchases serve as the data that is learned. When something out of the norm is detected, an alert goes off that a purchase may be fraudulent. Regression algorithm is great for predicting based on past data that we have identified as important. But what if we don't know what is important? What if we have a lot of data points and we're not really sure what's significant or we want to identify outliers? Dimensionality reduction is exactly for this kind of use case. It finds outliers or significant factors from a very large data set. Let's take the stock market again as an example. If you've ever looked at a fundamental breakdown of a stock, you'll see that there are a lot of data points that can have a significant impact into the performance of the price of the stock. Dimensionality reduction can take all of these various data points across an entire industry over a specified amount of time and help identify important data points. The same concept can be used in thread hunting. For example, a 12% sudden increase in CPU usage may just be another Windows update on a PC. But when combined with other data points, like the fact that the user also went to an uncategorized URL, has an old version of Firefox, an unpatched version of Windows, it could also point to something more serious. Dimensionality reduction is designed to find these patterns of suspicious behavior in a mountain of data in a way that simply cannot be matched by human hands or static sim rules. As we wrap up the algorithm discussion, it's important to note that algorithms are not mutually exclusive. It's common to have two or more algorithms combined or ensembled to produce a final verdict. Now let's put it all together by looking at a high level machine learning flow. Data comes in as the input into the machine learning model. Depending on the decision that needs to be made about the data, a model is selected. As we saw previously, a model is made up of training times algorithm plus data.
The more data that runs through the algorithm, the more a model is ultimately trained. Our data is now outputted as a decision which is sent off to some other application which then decides what it wants to do with that decision. Taking one of the most complex subjects in modern time and bringing it down in less than 10 minutes is almost impossible to do it justice. But the idea here is for you to grasp the overall concept of the different components within machine learning to understand how it all comes together. For our next video, we're going to take a deep dive into machine learning use cases and examples of how it's already shaping the future of IT and cybersecurity. So that does it for this video, you guys, and I hope you found it informative. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos about IT and cybersecurity concepts. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to hit like on the video as it greatly helps the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, this is Andy with the CISO Perspective. Stay safe.